Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem group by, I think it's day 24 of the JavaScript challenge. We're getting pretty close to the finish line. Today we want to write a function or rather we want to add a function to the array prototype called group by where we sort of want to group by keys. The good thing though, is we're not responsible for actually creating these keys. We're given another function as a parameter for the group by method. And what we're going to do is call fn on each element in the input array. Now, how do we get an input array? It doesn't even look like there's a parameter being passed here. But, well, remember this method belongs to the array prototype chain. So when we call it, like for example, down here, when we call group by on this array, the this keyword in this array will refer to this object. So that's how we're gonna iterate through every object. Let's just do that to start out with. So for const object in this. And I don't even think it's guaranteed that everything in this is going to necessarily be an object, but we'll get to that in example three, I believe. But taking a quick look at example one, you can see we're given three objects and the output has two keys, one and two. There's no need to look super deep into how we're getting these keys. Well, they tell us this is the method. It's basically giving us the ID of each object in this case, but I wouldn't look too deep into that because that might just kind of confuse you because it's different in each example. The important thing here is for us to know which keys we want, perhaps we should use something like a key set, in our case, a hash set, because we might have some duplicate keys. So let's just try that to start out with. Well, we'd go through every object, we'd call fn on that object like this, and then we'd take this and add it to the key set, just like this. So this would give us all of the keys and then maybe using these keys, we could construct the object. Well, for every key, what do we want the value to be? Well, we're always gonna map every key to a list. So that's good. It's always gonna be mapped to a list. What are the values of that list going to be? Well, it's kind of the same as the FN function. Again, I wouldn't look super deep because in this case, IDs with a value of one are going to go in the one array. IDs with a value of two are gonna go in the other array. That's the same way we got the keys in the first place. So at this point, you might have first thought we'd first build the key set and then start adding all the values over here to possibly like some resulting object because of course that's what we want to return in this case. So I'll just even add that here as well, return the result. But isn't it true that if this object perhaps maps to like the key one, then we want to add it to the list of one. Our key maps to a list that we're gonna take this object and add it to that list. So why split it up into two steps? Can't we do it in one step? Can't I just take this result and use an object instead of a key set? Well, an object in this case is similar to like a hash map. So we won't have duplicate keys in this object. And instead of adding it to the key set, why not instead do something like this where we say for the result, this is going to be our key and that key is gonna be mapped to an empty array. But we'd probably only wanna execute this if this key was not already in the object because otherwise we might be getting rid of the values that were already stored there. So let's add that if result has own property, this key, which we don't necessarily need to call that function twice. So let's go ahead and just say const key is equal to this. And then we'll check if that key is a property of this object. And in our case, we want to make sure that it's not already a property of that object, in which case we would then say the result of this key is going to be initialized to an empty array. Otherwise, the else case and actually we don't even need an else case because this is the part we're gonna execute each time. We're gonna say, now this key is already mapped to some array and we want to push onto that array this object. We're not gonna map it to anything. We're just gonna push this object to the array with the exact same key, remember? That's kind of the important part. That's what we're doing. We're grouping by a key. We don't know what that key is and we don't even know how it's being determined. It's being determined by this function that we're calling over here, but that's not really our responsibility anyway. So we could look at the other examples, but we've pretty much already solved this problem. In this case, we have an array of arrays, but remember, we don't really care about how we determine that key. Our function is doing that. And in this case, the function is just taking the first element 
of that list, converting it to a string and using that as the key. And in this case, since all three of these have a first value of one, they're all gonna go in the same output array. And similarly, the last example, it doesn't even have objects, it's just an array of values. And our function is basically returning true if the value is greater than five or false if it's less than or equal to five and then splitting them up like that. So it's grouping by this function. And I'll quickly run this code to show you that it works, but there's a slight change we can make to reduce the code. And obviously I had a typo here, so it's supposed to be has own property. And also I used a for in, since we know this is an array, we want to go through every value in there, not every key. So we say for of, sorry about that. But you can see the code does work and it's pretty efficient now, but there is a small optimization we can make. And that is here, we don't necessarily need to check if this key doesn't exist. There's a shorthand that we can do in JavaScript like this. If the result of the key already exists, then it should just stay as it is. But if it doesn't exist, meaning this part evaluates to being falsy, then we want to initialize it to an empty array. So you can see I'm using the logic or operator. Normally it will try to execute this part and if it returns truthy, it won't execute the rest of this statement because it doesn't need to. The logic or will always be true if even one of the terms happens to be true. So in our case, if this key doesn't already exist in the object, this will evaluate to undefined, which is falsy in JavaScript, and then this will be initialized to an empty array. So then we can get rid of this block up here. And once again, I'll run the code to show you that it works. And as you can see, yes, it does. And I wanna quickly mention that this isn't exclusive to JavaScript. You can also do this in Python. And to quickly show you in Python, a variable like an empty array will evaluate to falsy. So now if I try to print the empty array or some string like hello, this will evaluate to false and it'll print the string hello, as you can see on the right. Now, if I make this string or this array actually have some values, it will no longer be false. And I didn't really use the variable here. So let's put nums there and now let's see what happens well the first part of it evaluated and the second part didn't so you can do something similar to javascript like this and the same like assignment type thing will work and now if I print nums, you'll see we got one and two just as we expected. I think it's useful to kind of know the small differences and similarities between languages. So I just want to quickly go over that. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. It has a ton of free resources to help you prepare. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.